Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. And if you've been around this channel for a little while, hopefully you get the idea that safety is important to me. And uh, if you're new to this channel, that's a theme that I like to keep throughout my videos. And so today we are looking at yet another laser enclosure. Enclosures are important to be able to operate these machines while containing smoke debris and in some cases also the light reflections to keep you and your loved ones safe. So we are going to look at another one today. This one was sent to us by Brover. Uh, it is another uh, frame and fabric type covering to make an enclosure that we are going to build. We are going to test and uh, I will give you my thoughts on it at the end of the video. So if that's something that you are interested in, stay tuned. We will jump right into it. As we work through the build, I just wanted to really highlight that it is great that they individually wrapped and labeled all the parts with letters that correspond to the steps in the instruction manual. All right, so I'm not going through the whole build as the manual does step you through how to build the frame, but here at step four, uh, we basically get to cover the frame, picture, and finish assembly. So I'm gonna get a close up, show you how this goes together just in case it gets a little tripped up for you. So let's zoom in and we'll take a look at that. All right, so just a few things about this. So you'll see there is this notch here. That is so that the cable on the fan can pass through. Also notice that the fan has four post holes and in here there are four posts in here. So we need to line those up and then once again we're looking for that arrow there. That's going to show the direction of the airflow. So we want that out. So this is the outside. We're going to want that pointing up. So now what we need to do is get this in place over those posts. Just push it down so that it's snug. And then you'll see here that the cable comes out. Now again, we've got these ridges here along with these ridges here. And there's gaps. So what you want to do is try to put these in to the side. They'll kind of, there you go. You get those gaps and then you can kind of twist it and make sure it's held in place and level. There we go. They kind of snap on, twist on. It's not the smoothest operation, but you'll get that close. And that seems to seal up pretty well. I'm going to check it. I may end up adding some tape around here as well. But then this will pop off. That's where our hose will go over top. You see that this is fairly snug up to the fan on both sides, so it shouldn't have a lot of opportunity for smoke to get out there. All right, so we've got the enclosure built. We've got the top on, and we Velcroed down all the parts. And so the last thing they include that's an upgrade from this is this is a strip of LED lights. Uh, now this is USB powered. They don't provide a power brick for this, but uh, hopefully you have something laying around that uh, can plug into USB power, whether it's a power brick from a phone, uh, battery backup type thing, or um, you know, even just some power strips have them integrated. Uh, so you need to power that. And then now this stuff is, uh, it's an LED strip, it's encased, it's some of the waterproof um, rubberized ones. And it does have a sticky back on here that you can use to adhere it to the top bar. Um, now, if you do that, it's probably gonna be harder to take this back apart if it's your type of person who wants to um, set this up and then take it back down uh, time to time. Um, so you can use that sticky back, but they also include three small strips of Velcro or hook and loop to help fasten it on as well. So I'm gonna get this routed in here and um, we'll see how that works and how it lights it up the inside. I've moved the laser enclosure over to the workbench where we're gonna be doing our testing and wanted to go over some of the basic dimensions. So the footprint that we're working with is 26 inches or 660 millimeters both front and back and side to side. From the base of what it's sitting on up to the bottom of this top bar, we've got about 17 inches or 430 millimeters to work with. So those are your interior dimensions, everything that's gonna to need to fit inside those. A couple other things to keep in mind, however, is we've got our power cord for our fan, and if that's, depending on where you have it, you have about 47 inches or 1200 millimeters of cord length. So if your fan's over on the right side, but your power's over on the left side, you may need to 
think about where you use a power strip or an extension for that, as well as the USB lights. Uh, once you get this routed inside and down one of the sides, you're only left with about 14 inches or 360 millimeters to work with. So in that case, you may want to have like a battery backup unit, battery charging unit that you can plug in, and that will power it up without having to worry about cord length. Um, these are fairly uh, inexpensive and those lights will run a long time on that. So now that we've got our basic dimensions set up, let's fit a few lasers in here to give you an idea of how some of the more popular ones will fit into this enclosure. All right, kicking it off, we've got the Scope Fun S10 in here. Obviously plenty of room was able to fit it in through this front area. It looks like on the side, we've got just a little over three inches of clearance from the frame. And uh, to the stepper motor, we've got maybe two and a half inches. And uh, we've got our head right here in the middle and from the loop there we've got a good four inches so uh, plenty of room uh, side to side there's some room front to back here and uh, behind it as well so definitely an easy fit here we've got the x-tool d1 sitting inside again we've got room around both sides which helps with leaving room for cable management plenty of room top to bottom as the x-tool is far shallower and then there's still room behind it as well. So here we've got the Ortur Laser Master 3. This is one of the longer front to back lasers that we have. It does still fit, but as you can see up front, fairly close and in back, there's maybe an inch of space. Uh, so it does fit, but this is where it's starting to get just a little more of a snug fit. All right, and finally we've got the Atom Stack A20 Pro. This is a little bit taller and a little bit longer front to back. Right, so one of the other features that this laser enclosure touts like some of the others that we've tested is that they are fire resistant. And so that really comes from this kind of silicone type coating on the inside and outside of this enclosure. And um, so we're gonna go ahead and test that on here just make sure that it does uh, hold up to a, an open flame. Um, but you know, along our lines of safety here, you don't want to walk away and be complacent that this is going to completely contain a fire. It will slow it down, it will give you time to react, uh, but if you're getting to the point where things are really starting to flare up in flame, uh, you need to be there, you need to be proactive and uh, take care of the situation before it gets worse. So uh, it's great that it'll help suppress it and uh, not spread it quite as fast, uh, but that's never an excuse to let these things sit and run and uh, I think they'll be fine. All right, so we are going to do the flame test. We're gonna do it with a regular lighter. And so we are going to just basically apply flame to the inside and uh, simulate if there was a fire sitting along the side of this. As you can see, it's not starting on fire. It's not burning. I'm getting a little bit of just smoke on the outside. And that's typical what we've seen from these other enclosures where not burning but they just off gas a little bit so there you see a little bit of smoke on the inside too so they say you know you could hold a lighter up here for I think about five minutes and it still shouldn't burn through and uh, if you do have an issue with it they uh, apparently will honor a warranty and replace it but uh, all right I think that's quite long enough it's ah, definitely hot to the touch you know but it's not there's no real soot there's nothing burned on there and um, there we go all right so we got to go ahead and test this thing and what I'm interested in is the integrated fan now it's a 12 volt fan running at about 0.42 amps um, and in an 80 millimeter case, those are generally gonna pull around 50 CFM. And that might seem a lot, but in typical enclosures like this that I'm running, unless I have a real straight shot from the enclosure outside, uh, I find I have losses if it's going too long. So um, we're gonna see how it pulls out. Um, I actually have it on a little bit longer of a pipe just due to my setup here. Um, but you, this may be one of the issues that if, if you aren't right next to a window and able to vent it right outside uh, in you know just a few feet, you may find yourself needing to augment that with an auxiliary fan pulling it along. So um, we're going to uh, turn this thing on and start seeing how it pulls the smoke out.
All right, I have it engraving a file and also cutting on some quarter inch plywood that I know to be fairly smoky. Uh, as far as sound, it's not too bad. The fan by itself does make some noise, but the sound you're actually hearing now is really from the laser itself, the Atom Stack A20 and all its fans on the module do get quite loud. So um, it's not, shouldn't be increasing the noise level in your shop too much if that's an issue. Uh, I am feeling kind of some positive airflow around the edges. You, know, you will notice that that the skirting does come down to the bottom, but it does need to allow some air in. So uh, if you're smelling smoke while using this, a couple things to check for is that you do have positive airflow moving through and not, uh, you basically want negative air pressure in there. You want it to be pulling air in. Um, and if it can't, then you need to actually open up a little bit. You could do that just by cracking this a little bit to allow air to kind of pull in through here and move towards the back or just ensure that you have your skirting up just enough in areas that air can get through. All right, I've brought in closer that you might be able to see, I don't know if it's gonna show up, but we are starting to see some smoke kind of along the top there that it's, it's coming from the cut. So that means the laser is creating some smoke, but I am not currently smelling it out there. And then also, just to highlight this LED bar, if we wanna turn this off, you can see it gets really dark in there really hard to see what's going on. So having those LED bars in there definitely helps out quite a bit. Another thing that I do want to note uh, as safety is important to me, uh, while this does have a darkened cover here to help block out some of the light, uh, I don't believe that it is fully laser rated. And so you do run the risk of getting some flashback if you're not wearing some safety goggles. So uh, if you're needing to monitor it and actively look at it, I would strongly recommend you have a pair of safety glasses that are appropriately rated for your laser. Now the Atom Stack does have its filtered glass on the front of it. That does a good job. You do have the darkened layer. This is uh, just kind of our final line of defense. Uh, and if you're not constantly staring at it, maybe off to the side, this is opaque along the sides and that's not gonna be affecting you. But if you're gonna need to sit here and be actively monitoring what you're doing, um, then you're gonna wanna be wearing the glasses. Now what we're going to see here is when it starts the cut operation, we do get a lot of extra smoke and you'll notice that it is rolling towards the back. We're going to go ahead and speed it up here. And then as the cut finishes, there is a little bit of lingering smoke, but this is back in real time. And you can see how that fan is pulling the smoke out of the enclosure within about 10 seconds. All right, well, we finished up that cut job. And as hopefully you saw in that video, it was creating some smoke. It was getting a little bit of a, a buildup on top, but after just letting it run for about five, 10 seconds after the job was complete, it seemed to dissipate fairly quickly. So um, even with my less than optimal setup of having to run the hose a little extra length and some more bends, it seems to be doing an okay job, but I would strongly recommend that you put this, if you're just using this with the included fan, I would get it as close to your exit uh, vent as possible. Keep that pipe as straight with as few bends as possible, that's gonna help this be t uh, as effective as, as it can. And the more bends and the more length you have in there of that piping and that hose, uh, the more the air slows down and doesn't uh, escape and evacuate. So, all right, so that's gonna wrap up our testing. So let's go over some of the pros and cons here. Uh, first off, I think it's great. They're including a four inch port. That's gonna allow a lot more air movement and it's gonna be easier for many of us to port out into typical hosing and piping that's available around uh, in your home improvement centers. Uh, it's great that it includes a fan. That's one less thing you have to buy. However, just a little caveat on that is that if you have a longer uh, run or if you have a lot of bends in there, that fan may need an additional auxiliary fan along the line to make sure it's evacuated in the air smoothly. And then uh, we do love that there are the LED lights in there. Uh, as we've noticed in some of the earlier enclosures, not having them in there makes it very dark. Having the LED lights able to light up things in there, be able to see what's going on is a huge plus. Now with that, um, both the fan and the lights, um, the cables may be a little bit limiting. Uh, there's not a lot of extra length on them and there's no switches on them. Uh, I'm running with a power strip that has individual switches which allow me to turn off and on things like air pumps, lights, uh, even the laser controller itself. Uh, so you may wanna look at one of those for yourself. Otherwise, you'll need to figure out if you're just gonna plug and unplug it or add a switch in line yourself. As far as the cost of this enclosure, at the time of this video, it is selling for $129. However, there is currently a $20 off coupon. So if you hurry up, you may be able to take advantage of that and get this at a better deal. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you found it informative. 
I uh, strongly encourage everyone, uh, make sure you're being safe with these lasers and having an enclosure and uh, routing those fumes and any debris out is very important to your health, your family's health. Um, it's worth it to invest in this or any other enclosure to make sure that you can enjoy this hobby. If you have any questions or comments about this video or anything else you've seen in my workshop, go ahead and leave them down below. I will have links below to this enclosure along with some of the other things used in this video. Some of them are affiliate links and they do go to help this channel at no additional cost to you. So if you found this useful and uh, you're looking to purchase this, I always appreciate the support. If you like what you see here, definitely hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button because I do post here fairly regularly with uh, various projects, various product reviews. Just anything that's going in the workshop, love to share it with others. And so well, that's about all we've got for today. I hope this was entertaining or educational, and I hope to see you next time. In the meantime, hopefully you can get out into your workshop and make something too.